Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Happy Sunday to every single person. If you're joining us for the very first time this month of August, we've been studying the subject of harvest time. And this morning's topic is tied to praise time. Harvest time means praise time. Because the Bible says in the books of Psalm 67, verse 5 to 6, it says, let the people praise thee, O God, let the people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield our increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. And the verse 7 says, and the ends of the earth shall fear him. So we understand that the praises of, his, of God's people causes the earth to yield increase. And I believe that in this season, if you are going to have a hundredfold return on the seed that you have sown, then you need to praise God. Praising God is verbalizing our faith, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. I want to assure you that God has spoken exactly what it means. When God has said it's harvest time, it means that those seed, those labor, those sacrifices, are this time for them to begin to yield and bring results in our lives. And I would know from even elementary signs of farming that if you sow one seed, you don't reap just one seed back, at least 30 folds and 60 folds, 100 folds. As the Bible describes in the books of um, Matthew chapter 13. So this morning we want to look at the subject of praise time because I believe that when we understand what it means to praise God we will do it more often and we will see greater result and when that begins to manifest in our lives we can truly begin to praise God more and see greater 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 results. So get ready for an exciting time in God's presence this morning because God is about to open up his treasures unto you by releasing the garment of praise upon you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless you. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for being our God and Savior. Thank you for delivering us from visible and invisible battles. Thank you for victory. O oh Lord, my Father, we give you all the glory and praise. Now, Lord, as we sit at your feet to learn your word, please open our eyes of understanding. Reveal your perfect counsel unto us. Reveal the mystery of praise to us as we begin to uh, gather in the harvest to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Praise and thanksgiving is verbalized faith. If you thank God after the fact that he has done something for you. That means you have gratitude. We talked about gratitude earlier in our series of teaching. But if you thank God before it happens, then you have faith. We praise God before who he is, for what he has done and what he's going to do. For God is not a man that you should lie, not the son of man that you should repent. He will not say a thing that he does not intend to accomplish. It makes us understand from the scriptures that not even a single jot of the word that he has spoken unto us will go back to him unfulfilled. So God is great and greatly to be praised. We need to put aside, put aside our murmuring, our complaints, our hurt feelings, and things or broken dreams that are yet to be fulfilled. For if God has spoken it, surely he will back us up and he will fulfill what he has said concerning our lives. Now I want to share with us a few reasons why we must praise God. Many times we lose the reasons why we should praise him. In the books of Psalm 22 verse 3, the Bible says God dwells in the praises of his people or he inhabits the praises of his people. So when you want God to manifest his presence in your situation, then praise must be what you actually engage in. Because the manifest presence of God is endeared towards his, uh, the praises of his people. When Solomon was dedicating the temple, he began to get the singers to sing and they began to sing in one accord and the manifest presence of God descended into the place. When you want God's manifest presence in your situation, and remember, if God appears in your situation, every challenge of your life will disappear because who can stand before him? He is the almighty God. Remember the books of Psalms 114 verse 6 and 7. The Bible talks about um, mountains skipping like rams and, little, and hills skipping like little, you know, little ships. 
So God is mighty, he's great and greatly to be praised. Now, our understanding of who God is will begin to endure us to praise him more. Moses said, I will not leave from here except your presence goes with us. Because when God's presence goes with you wherever you go, then you are assured of victory wherever you go. That's why if you're going to get in to the harvest this season, in your day-to-day life, you must find time to praise him so that his presence will go with you wherever you go. Number two, praises secures victory. I'm sure you remember the story of Joseph against the, Am- uh, the Moabites and Ammonites in the books of 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 15 to 22. The story tells us about a king that was surrounded by three kings and he had no military might to actually face them. But he turned to praise as the secret was given unto him. And the same army that came against him began to fight against himself. He did not have to lift a finger for victory. So if you want God to take over your battles, then begin to praise him more and more. There are some things in your life that you cannot fight through your own intellectual power or through your own material possession or resources because they will drain you out completely. I've secured many praise. Um, vic- I've secured many victories, rather, true praises in my own personal life. And that's why I still engage in praising God on a daily basis. Even when I'm sitting down at a desk, I, I still hum music in my head, still praising Him, joyous, always. And it keeps the spirit of heaviness away from me. Number three. Praises secure our release. Since we are still still on the topic of victory against the enemy, let me talk about release. You see, Paul and Silas were beaten, well beaten. I use the word well beaten because their their body was aching and, and in pain. They were not only that, they were also chained. In the books of Acts chapter 16, if you read verse 25 to 26. But praise was what they used to secure their own victory. Because he puts away every act of fear, anger, bitterness. And then he actually puts God in control. When you begin to praise God, you are putting God in the driving seat of your life. And every disappointment and distress, when they see the Lord Jesus in the driving seat, they bow. You see, the problem that we have most of the time because of our pride as humans, we often find it very difficult to surrender the controls of our life to the Lord. He cannot mismanage our lives. So whenever you feel things around you are not in order, and they're not going the way they ought to be going, then surrender it over to God who knows where he's going, for he's Alpha and Omega. He knows the beginning from the ending, and he knows the end from the beginning. So therefore, nothing can stop him. He knows the best way to get you to your destination. Number four, when we talk about praising, we unburden ourselves. In the books of Isaiah 61 verse 3, Isaiah 61 verse 3, the Bible talks about the spirit of heaviness. We should get the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In other words, there are some things that will wear us down that we cannot shake off through our own natural means. Oftentimes I tell people, why are you fighting supernatural battles with natural means? You only get yourself frustrated, you get yourself defeated, and you wonder if God is truly God. It takes mystery to overcome mysteries. When the devil brings a mystery in your way, then you must have a greater mystery to overcome it. Just as the magician of of Egypt began to drop their own rod to become serpent, but the greater serpent swallowed the smaller serpents. So you must understand this, that when heaviness begins to come upon your spirit and you begin to feel as if there's no way out, they begin to praise him. For praises bring joy to the Christian. Because we show that we are truly surrendered unto him. 
That's why we can sing, I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. We belong to him who has called us. And because we belong to him, we become a touch knot for the enemy. Number five, our praises show that we are not ashamed of Christ. Jesus said, if you are afraid or you are ashamed of me, before men I shall be ashamed of you, of my father who is in heaven. Many times we, we are very ashamed of the Lord and his words, especially in this adulterous and sinful generation. But when we begin to praise him publicly, openly, even the church people find it hard to praise God. And I wonder, how can you say you truly love him if you are ashamed to praise him? See, we must understand the mystery that lies behind praises. David did it so often, so well, that God called him a man after my own heart. I think that's the only person that God ever used that phrase for in the scriptures. Now, David is not without his flaws. We know that he killed Uriah and he took over his wife and all kind of things that he did. But God still called him a man after my own heart. That's interesting to me because it shows that God can overlook even your imperfection when you're a true worshiper and a true praiser. Because you truly value who God is. How great is our God? He is great and mighty. He holds back the waters of the Red Sea. One of the greatest encounters I've had as a person is through my praise time, during my praise time. Notice I said my praise time, not my prayer time. There's a time for prayer, there's a time for praise. When you have a praise time, as well as a prayer time, your, your, your prayer life, in court becomes complete. So we must begin to understand the mystery of praises. We might look at praises in depth as we close the series of teaching for the month on Wednesday. Now, how do I praise him effectively? Because of the season of harvest that we're in. Number one. You pray, praise him with the whole of your heart. Psalm 138 verse 1. I will praise thee with the whole of my heart before the gods. I will praise thee. I will sing praises unto thee. When you talk about the heart, there are three most important things that come into play here. One is the will, your mind, your emotions, your person, your intellect. You see, sometimes we get into a church environment and praises is going on. Our hands are clapping, but our body is not moving. Why? Because your mind is telling your body, you're educated. How can you be lifting your hand up in the air, throwing your legs up like a madman? Remember the story of David. He was busy dancing and offering God the wildest praise he could. His, left, his legs were lifted up and he was dancing. He didn't care who was looking at him. And Micah saw him. He said, look at the king. She was thinking of her position before God. Or she was thinking of her position as the queen. David was thinking of himself as a little shepherd boy that was made the king. A little shepherd boy that was made the king. And suddenly he began to say, forget the position. I'm nothing before God. Because all I am, you give them to me. So when we begin to praise God, we lose ourselves completely. When I talk about wholehearted praise, we lose ourselves completely in terms of our status in the society, our personality, who we are, what we do. We simply just praise Him with the whole of our heart. Number two, when we talk about praising God, you believe His word. Because, you see, He has exalted His words above His names. You see, many of us at times, we forget that God says what he means and exactly what he wants to do. We often think about um, how come, how is this possible to be accomplished? 
Because we think to ourselves, well, I can figure God out. I've shared this before and I'll say it again. Every time I'm in a situation and I begin to pray and I think this is how God is going to do it, I find out that he always does it differently. Just to prove to me that he is he's not my level. He said, as the heaven is far from the earth, so is God far from us in terms of understanding, in terms of reasoning, in terms of know how. Number three, how can you praise God effectively? Praise Him in the beauty of holiness. God is holy. God is holy. And he says, without holiness, no man can see God. When you want to offer a worthy praise unto God, and then it must be done in holiness and humility. Many times we forget how powerful God is, and we forget that he's a consuming fire. And we approach him anyhow, offering strange fire before him. This oftentimes will get us into trouble. I think God is more merciful now because of the blood of the Lamb that is speaking on our behalf than he was during the days of the Old Testament. I want to encourage you when it comes to praising God, do it with reverence, knowing that God is God. He might be our Heavenly Father, but He's still the Almighty God. The one that the entire angels of heaven are bound before. Even the devil bows before him. And oftentimes, you see, I, I tell people, you see, when you read the scripture, you begin to understand the kind of power that God has. It, it amazes me that that mighty God or the almighty God can even think of little men, men like us. No wonder David said, he said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? I mean, one angel can kill one or eight, five thousand uh, people. One angel. It's written, it's written in the scriptures. One angel could kill one eighty-five thousand, And then the Bible talks about him having a measurable amount of angels before him. So how then can that mighty God still think of us mere men? With all the power, the wealth, affluence that he controls. So don't forget how powerful God is. Still have reverence for him. In the beauty of his holiness. He is the almighty God. Number four, we must learn to keep going. Praising God should not be circumstantial. It should not be done because we feel good. Whether good times or bad times, we praise God. Paul and Silas were locked up in prison. Acts chapter 16, we talked about it earlier. They were still praising God. Their body was aching. They were still praising God. You don't praise him when he has done something for you. You praise him in spite of what he has done, um, even what he's yet to do. Because where you are right now is as a result of God's mercy that has prevailed over every judgment. Number four, praise him with your body, your voice, praise him with your emotion, with your life, whether you eat, you're drinking. He said you do unto the Lord. First Corinthians 10 verse 31. His loving kindness is better than lives. Psalm 63 verse 3. So we must understand that when we praise him, we praise him with our body. He, he owns it all. Praise him with clapping. I've observed that sometimes in churches, people are even, they feel too big to even stand up, clap their hands and worship God. We must not get to a stage where we feel we are bigger than God. We must never get to a stage where we think we can, you know, uh, we don't need God in our situation. Because when that day comes, guess what happens? We become sitting dogs for the enemy and he will just simply do what he wants with us. May that not happen to us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands, worship him, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Psalm 47 verse 1, as the Bible says. Praise him skillfully with musical instruments, with dancing, with string instruments, with flutes. Psalm 150 verse 3 to 5. Is a praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the flute, with the harp, with the timbrel, with the dance, with string instruments, 
Praise him with a loud voice. Praise him with symbols, crashing symbols. Praise him because he's worthy to be praised. There's no one like him. He's the almighty God. This we must understand. That God is God. With or without us, he will still remain God. As I begin to close, perhaps I end up where we started from. The Bible says in the books of Psalm 67, verse 5 to 6, it said, Let the people praise thee, O Lord. Let the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield our increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. We want the blessings of God that makes rich and hard do sorrow. We want him to bestow it upon us. We want him to, to bless us and increase us on every side. But then we must give him quality praise. That will make God arise from his throne and enter into our situation and bring about the manifestation of the blessings that we desire. What kind of harvest do you want will determine by the kind of praises you're willing to give unto God? I believe the words of God has touched your heart this morning. It's time to praise God and really worship and dance before him for he's worthy to be praised. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. And we thank you so much for your power, your love towards us. Thank you for the words that we have heard this morning. I pray, Lord, that you shall mingle with faith in our hearts and shall bring fruit in our lives, the glory and praise of your holy name. Give us the garment of praise so that we all can worship you and praise you in the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Savior, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.